The sinusoidal wave equation can be written as y is equal to a sine kx minus omega t plus phi. Now this is for a transverse wave because we're measuring the height y and we're looking at how that varies through time and along the x-axis. So to see what a sinusoidal wave looks like, have a look at this little graphic down here, which I've taken from the FET site. This shows a sinusoidal traveling wave. So you may be thinking, well, why do we choose a sinusoidal traveling wave? Why don't we choose some other type of function? And it actually turns out that there's a very good reason for this. We can generate any shaped function by adding together different sine functions. So this is involved with Fourier transforms and things that you don't need to worry about. But basically, you can think of sinusoidal traveling waves as the building blocks of any type of wave. So any type shaped of wave can be described by adding together possibly a lot, but um, a number of different sinusoidal waves. Okay, so with our traveling wave, all the symbols that you see have the same meaning as before. So Y, this tells us the height above the equilibrium position in the Y direction, so it's measured in meters. A, this is the amplitude of the wave, which is the maximum displacement from the equilibrium position, and two times the amplitude is equal to the distance between the crest and the trough. K, this is the wave number. It is equal to 2 pi divided by lambda, where lambda is the wavelength measured in meters. X, that tells us how far along our medium we are from the origin. Omega, this is the angular frequency. So once again, it's given by 2 pi times the frequency, 2 pi f. T, this is the time, so measured in seconds and phi, this is the phase constant. Okay, so probably the best way to get used to this equation is to have a look at an example. So let's work through an example now. So the question is, a transverse wave traveling in the positive direction has a wavelength of 2.5 meters and a period of 2.0 seconds. The amplitude of the wave is 0 0.50 meters. Part A. If at t equals 0 and x equals 0, the height of the string is y equals 0 meters, write down an equation to describe the wave. Part b, if at t equals 0 and x equals 0, the height of the string is y equals 0 0.25 meters, write down an equation to describe the wave. Okay, so to answer this one, we know that the wavelength is given by 2.5 meters, We've got that the period is equal to 2.0 seconds and that the amplitude is equal to 0 0.50 meters. Our equation for a transverse sinusoidal wave is given by y of x and t is equal to a sine kx minus omega t plus phi. This is for a wave traveling in the positive direction like we were asked for. Okay, so what we're going to need to do is work out k and work out omega. So to work out k, we know that k is equal to 2 pi over lambda. So we've got 2 pi over 2.5. And so we can write this as 2 pi over, we can write 2.5 as 5 over 2. And then if we times the top and the bottom both by 2, we end up with 4 pi over 5. So that's our value for k. If you wanted, you could evaluate this and just give it as a decimal. But it's quite nice to keep the pi there. So with omega, we've got omega is equal to 2 pi f, which is 2 pi over the period. So that's equal to 2 pi on 2. So this is equal to pi. So we have our equation y of x and t is equal to a, which is 0 0.50 sine times 4 pi on 5 x minus pi t plus 5. Okay, now 
what we're going to need to do is use the information in part A and then in part B to work out what phi is to get our total equation. So for part A, we know at x equals 0, t equals 0, we've got y of 0, and 0 is equal to 0. So substituting in, we've got 0 is equal to 0 0.50 sine 4 pi on 5 times 0 minus pi times 0 plus 5. So that was just substituting these values into this line here. And so we've got 0 is equal to 0 0.50 sine, this is 0 minus 0 plus 5. So sine phi, and so we can see that sine phi equals 0, and so phi is equal to 0 satisfies this, as we know that sine of 0 is equal to 0. You can check that on your calculator. And so our equation in this case is y of x and t is equal to 0 0.50 sine 4 pi on 5x minus pi t plus 0, which we don't need to write. So that's our equation for part A. For part B, we've got slightly different conditions. So we've got t equals 0, x equals 0, and our y of 0, 0, in this case is equal to 0 0.25. So once again, we'll substitute this into this equation here and find our phi for this case. So we've got 0 0.25 is equal to 0 0.50 times sine of 4 pi on 5x minus pi t plus 5. And so we're substituting in here. So we're substituting in for this x, this is 0, and this t this is also 0. So what we have now is 0 0.25 is equal to 0 0.50 sine. This is 0 minus 0 plus 5, so sine of 5. So we've got sine of 5 is equal to 0 0.25 over 0 0.50, so that's equal to a half. Okay, so we can solve this on the calculator. So we can say, well, phi is equal to the inverse sine of a half. And solving that, we end up with pi on 6. We need this answer in radians, as all the values inside this wave equation are given in radians. So if your calculator is in degrees mode, it would give you 30 degrees. So at that point, you need to convert that into radians. So to convert from degrees into radians, what we do is we take our number, 30 degrees in this case, we divide by 180 and we times by pi. So timesing by pi and dividing by 180 is how you always convert from degrees to radians. So when we do that, you can hopefully see that because um, 3 goes into 18 six times, we end up with a sixth of pi, which is what we've got up here. You could also give this as a decimal if you wanted, but it is kind of nice having everything in terms of pi. Okay, so we can substitute this in now. So our equation for this case is y of x and t is equal to 0 0.50 sine of 4 pi on 5 x minus pi t plus pi on 6. So we've solved this problem now.